Good day then. Good day everyone. My report is about the case of Philippine National Construction Corporation versus Court of Appeals. GR number 116898 on May 5, 1997. The facts of the case. On November 18, 1985, private respondent and a petitioner entered into a contract of place of a parcel of land owned by the former. The term and conditions of said contract of lease are as follows a the lease shall be for a period of five years which begins upon the issuance of permit by the ministry of human settlement and renewable at the option of the leasee under the terms and condition b the mo- the monthly rent is twenty thousand pesos which shall be increased yearly by 5% based on the monthly rate. C. The rent shall be paid yearly in advance and D. The property shall be used as premises of a rock crushing plant. On January 7, petitioner obtained permit from ministry which was to be valid for two years unless revoked by the ministry. Later, respondent requests the payment of the first annual rental, but petitioner alleged that the payment of rental should commence on the date of the issuance of the industrial clearance, not on the date of signing of the contract. Uh, it then expressed its intention to terminate the contract and decide to cancel the project due to financial and technical difficulties. However, petitioner refused the respondent's request and reiterated their demands for the payment of the first annual rental. But the petitioner argued that it was only obligated to pay 20,000 as rental for the month prompting private respondent to file an action against the petitioner for the specific performance which damages before the RTC of passing. The trial court rendered decision in favor of private respondent. Petitioner then appealed the decision of the trial court to, to the court of appeals but the, la- the, the latter affirmed the decision of the trial court and denied the motion for reconsideration. The issue, whether or not petitioner can avail the benefit of Article 1267 of the new civil code. Did the defendant commit injury to Lolita's family in a manner contrary to morals and good customs and public policy as contemplated in Article 21 of the new civil code? The ruling no the petitioner cannot take refuge of the said article article 1267 of the new civil code provides that when the service has become so difficult as to manifestly beyond the contemplation of the parties the obligor may also be released therefrom in whole or in part this article which enunciates the doctrine of unforeseen unforeseen event is not however an absolute application of the principle of ribosic stantibus which would uh, which would endanger the security of contractual relations the parties to the contract must be must be presumed to have assumed the risk of and favorable development. It is therefore only an absolute exceptional chances of circumstances that equity demands assistance for the victor. The principle of ribosic stantibus uh, neither fits in with the facts of the case. Under this theory, the parties stipulate in the light of certain prevailing conditions and once these conditions cease to exist, the contract also ceases to exist. 
In this case, petitioner averred that three abrupts abrupt changes in the uh, political climate of the country of the country after the EDSA revolution and its poor financial condition rendered the performance of this contract impractical and inimical to the corporate survival of the petitioner. However, as held in the Central Bank versus CA, Mer Picoriari inability to fulfill an engagement does not discharge a contractual obligation, nor does it constitute a defense of an action for a specific performance. Created using Powtoon.